At 16 years old, I went down to Huntsville, Alabama to visit some family. They had a huge farm down there and a ton of land. My uncle owns a big house with a bunch of trailers that they put out in the woods for hunting and camping. So while we were down there, my down south cousins suggest that we go out there to camp. They know I'm sort of like a city kid from Chicago, so they kind of tease me about it as we're heading out there. So while we're getting ready, we collect food, kill a pig, get some chickens, and bring necessities to camp out there for a few days. When we get to the camp, it's obvious that something's weird. The air has this weird electric smell, like right before a storm, sort of like ozone. We all think nothing of it and unpack and then go down to the little creek to swim for a few hours. As we're down there, an older guy and a teenager come out of the bushes. He has a shotgun in the crook of his arm and says hello and asks us what we're doing this far back in the woods. So I tell him about my uncle who he knows and says that we're camping. He tells us that we need to be real careful out here and stick together as there's been a big animal in the woods. But while we're talking, his son, who's around our age, asks if he can hang out with us. And he says okay. So we end up playing football, dicking around most of the time. There's this kid named Tanner, five of my cousins and then four of their friends so in total there are about five girls and six boys and we're all about the age of 15 to 17 years old we ended up just screwing around and completely wasting the day away so we head back to the camp and pulled out some stuff for a campfire even though the trailers both had kitchenettes Tanner says that his family's property actually sits right up against my uncle's, and he wants to run back home and ask his dad if he can come out camping with us too. My cousin Rooster says he's going to go with him since it's going to get dark soon, and one of the girls wants to tag along. It's about 7 o'clock, and it started getting pretty dark. They take flashlights and take the trail towards Tan's property. The rest of us just sort of chill. We make s'mores, drink, and kiss on the girls. About 30 or 40 minutes later, there's a smell of ozone again. You can smell it all over. This really nasty coppery smell, like right after you've had a nosebleed, also began to creep in, and it almost smelled like it wasn't exactly dried blood, but it was this nasty metallic back of your throat smell. We immediately think it's some kind of electrical malfunction and someone left a hot plate on or some shit. We search the trailers and really nothing is on, but we can all smell it. All of a sudden, we can hear people booking it down the path towards us and Rooster, Tan, and the girl all come running out into the clearing out of breath. They didn't even break stride. They all run into the trailer right by where the fire is. We all get the fuck out of there and into the trailers because we just saw them completely hauling ass. They end up calming down, and even Rooster is crying his fucking eyes out at this point. All the while, the fire is guttering lower and lower. So my cousins say fuck it, and they're about to go outside and get the generator out of the shed between the trailers. Tanner begins screaming to lock the front door, ain't nobody else going outside. He's been crying too, and his eyes are bloodshot and puffy with his pants as dirty as shit. He goes on to tell us that he went up to the house. His father said sure, he could go out camping, but to make sure they were careful on their way back, and maybe they should take a few hunting rifles just in case. Evidently, Tanner had seen something in their yard a few days before, and one of their pigs had come up ripped in half and eaten. They assumed it to be some big cat or coyote, even though those don't usually fuck with live animals. He ran up the stairs excitedly and packed his stuff and told his dad that they would be okay without the rifle because coyotes avoid people. So they started walking back to where they were camping. So, Rooster finally stops crying and shaking. The girls already had, but she was just staring out the window with a dumb look on her face. She says they had gotten halfway into the woods towards the camp when they started to hear shit in the forest. It was almost pitch black by this time, so they weren't really sure at first what the fuck it was. The girl says that she heard something in the bushes right off the trail, and they all beamed their flashlights over there, and there was something standing back in the woods in a little hollow. Rooster said that they shouted at him and told him that he was scaring the fuck out of them and what a dick he was. He says that when he realized the guy was facing away from them, they just continued walking, but that's when they started smelling this nasty coppery ozone smell. They said that they took off into the forest on the opposite side, and it's a dude standing in the woods, backwards slightly closer to the path. So now they start power walking, and Tan keeps going, I should have taken a fucking rifle. As they are telling the story, the smell is still super strong, even inside the cabin. They said that after they started walking faster, a kind of low gibbering had started coming from both sides of the wood. As they started booking it back towards the trailer, the girl said that she had flashed her flashlight into the woods to the side of them, and had seen something jerking itself through the woods. 
The gibbering just got louder and louder, and when they could see the light of our campfire, something had come out of the woods about 40 yards behind them onto the trail, and they just flat out ran as hard as they could towards the trailer at that point. So we're out in the fucking woods, and assuming at this point it's just some rednecks or some shit trying to fuck with us, we start to compose ourselves. All of a sudden, my older cousin, Junior, starts going on about he went to school with a native kid and was telling them about the goat man or some shit. Well, promptly, he tells him to shut the fuck up because we don't need any spooky talk right now. But he just keeps going on and on about this fucking goat man and how we're in his woods and blah, blah, blah. Now, at the time, I had never heard of the Goat Man or any of that. But then a couple years ago, the year before I graduated college, I had a minimum for a roommate, and I ended up asking him about it. And to sum it up, it's basically a fucking man with the head of a goat, and he can shapeshift once he gets among groups of people to terrorize them. It's also supposed to be like a kind of Wendigo, but it's basically just bad mojo to even talk about it, and even worse if you see it. Keep in mind, I didn't know this back when I was 16. So my cousin is going, the Goat Man's going to get in and fucking get us. The girls are all terrified and my cousin and I are all fucking trying to figure out if it's just some hillbillies or if it's an animal. So all of a sudden, the smell just goes away. Like to this day, I haven't even experienced anything like it. Usually smell just fades away or lessens. It just literally was there one second and then not the next. So it's after an hour, making it around 9 or 10. We've stopped shitting bricks enough to go back outside and stoke the fire again. We figured it was just some asshole trying to fuck with us, so we didn't really go back home because we didn't think we need to. They'll chase us through the woods or some crazy shit like that. Nothing else weird happens that night. We stay another night, and for the main part of the night, nothing really happens. At about 1 in the morning, we're getting drunk and telling ghost stories. As someone is finishing some too spooky for you story, I don't remember what it was about, the smell starts creeping back, and this time, it's strong. So strong that one of the girls literally starts vomiting. I stand up, and you can actually feel how clammy the air is. I say we should get inside as something isn't right. We should have just fucking left. We all got back inside, and we're standing around. My cousin just keeps going on and on about his the goat man, and my cousin Rooster tries to shut him up. All the while, I'm just feeling that something is just completely wrong, but I can't figure out what it is. We end up sitting there for a while, the smell just as strong, and we're terrified and all huddled around this camper. We end up cooking some brats for everybody because nobody wants to go outside. It's one of those packs with four brats. We have a total of about three. I grill them over the stove and give everybody a hot dog. I get mine, and after a while, one of my cousins gets up and goes over to the pot to get another one. He starts grumbling about how I get two brats and everyone else gets one. And I look at him like he's fucking stupid. I tell him that everybody only got one because there are only 12 brats. If he wants more, he should just open up a new pack and cook some. That's when the girl who had been out with Rooster and Tan starts screaming. Oh Jesus, oh Lord, get out. She's crying and shivering and then it dawns on my cousin standing up what the fuck is wrong. Me and him both glance around the room and I start to feel my heart sink. I run out of the cabin and the girls run out with us. The trailer door is banging against the side of the trailer as everybody books it out of the cabin. One of my cousin's friends asks us, what the fuck is wrong? I start counting us. There's only 11 now. I shit you not, my cousin verified. There were 12 people in that cabin, but being that everybody doesn't really know each other that well, nobody had noticed that the whole fucking time there was an extra person. And then I realized that I kind of noticed something was off. You know when you're just sort of like dicking around and having a good time and you don't really sweat the small shit, but then you don't always keep track of certain stuff? I'm dead sure that someone else had been in the trailer with us and they had at least been there for a day eating with us. What makes it worse is I couldn't figure out which one because I don't think anyone has actually interacted with the other person slash goat man. The girl kept praying to Jesus while we're all sitting outside. Eventually, we get big ass sticks and go back into the cabin, but nobody's in there. We count again, and there's 11 people. We go back into the trailer and lock the door. We explain what the fuck happened, and the girl says she realized it too, and that when he was about to say something, the person sitting next to her grabbed her leg hard, leaned in toward her, and said something she couldn't understand. So we are pretty much scared as fuck as we huddle together and fall asleep. When I wake up, the sun's coming up, and half the people are asleep and the other half are packing up. We all want to walk back home, but like four want to stay until the sun's all the way up. And some people think we're just fucking around and still want to stay in the trailers. Me personally, I just want to get out of the woods. The girl's name was Kira, the one that the goat man had touched. Anyway, I asked her if she thinks it was something bad, 
and she says she wants to go home and she doesn't want to be out in the woods alone for another night. So we decide to split up. The four that can go, go. But I have to stay because I have the keys to the cabin and it's my uncle's so I have to lock up. I'm super pissed at this point because I feel like people aren't taking this shit seriously and I definitely didn't want to be out in the woods for another night. I spend the rest of the day trying to convince the other people, now four girls and four guys, to get the fuck out of Dodge. Tanner leaves with them to go get the rifle and says he's going to be back. So there are just seven of us left by about 4 p.m. At around 5 p.m., he hasn't made it back yet, and we're getting extremely fucking antsy, and the only reason I stopped begging them to go back because he went to get the gun. At about 5.30 or so, when the one cousin that didn't stay says that the girl Kira is outside, we all look outside, and sure enough, she's standing by the fire pit with her back to the cabin. I'm thinking to myself, if she's so fucking scared, why did she come back? And then I get this nasty feeling in my gut. Keep in mind, the whole time the coppery smell has been gone, I now realize that I can smell a twinge of it. I say this to the rest of them and everybody, and these are the people that wanted to stay in the woods after we had the goat men in our midst, and they're laughing at me and asking as if I set this up to scare them. I'm looking at this like I am not fucking bullshitting you right now. I ask them, why would I play like that? So one of the girls goes outside to get Kira. She gets halfway to her and stops cold. Kira starts heaving. I don't really know how to describe it. Sort of like someone with their back turned was laughing without actually making any sound. It was the fact that made me realize there was not a sound in the whole woods. It was dead silent. And this was in like later September. So it was supposed to be fairly hot at the time, but it was super chilly some days too. So you could usually hear geese honking and some kinds of birds or squirrels chit-chatting. So I step out of the door and tell her to come back in the trailer right now. She backs up into the trailer and we lock the door. We pull down the shades except one. And to put a guy there in a chair to watch her. She stands there for another 20 minutes or so. The guy turns to say that she's still there. And there's a huge bang on the door. We all jump the fuck up and scramble around the living room of the trailer. The banging is super loud. So my cousin is holding one of the girls and the other two are kind of giggling with nervous laughter and me and the other guy are literally shitting bricks. Then we hear Tan. He's screaming, let me the fuck in, stop playing. So we all go over the door and open it and he stumbles in with his rifle. There's nobody else outside. Evidently, he walked up to the campsite. Nothing happened in the forest, but he had seen the girl. Mind you, he said it was not Kira standing there. When he had gotten to the edge of the clearing, she turned toward him with a kind of a slack jawed look and stared him down slowly tracking him as he walked around the outside of the clearing towards the camp. He said it wasn't until he was almost halfway to the trailer that he realized she was getting closer to him. She had started off by the fire and without even seeing her move, she had been turning inching closer. He said that he just ran the rest of the way back to the cabin thinking it would be open. And when he got to the door and it was locked, he turned and it was about half the distance to the door. He looked around the room and then gets super pale. He pulls me to the side and whispers in my ear, you know there are only seven of us here, right? I get the feeling where your stomach drops to your nuts. It had been back inside the trailer while we were sorting out who was going where and when we were all outside to talk earlier that day. It has just slipped right back in. We looked out the window and there was nobody there. So we recount everyone and then basically I go over and ask how many people were there earlier and everybody says eight. I say, well, how many are there now? They all do the count and realize there are only seven people in the cabin. So Tan had brought back a couple boxes of ammo in his rifle, and he told his dad that there was some kind of animal in the forest because he didn't think his dad would believe him if he said the goat man. He says that his cousin is supposed to be coming down in a few hours, and that in the morning we can all go back to his place and my cousin will drive us home. Now I'm really terrified, but I at least feel better because we can be American and shoot the hell out of whatever it is if it comes back. But then my cousin gets into this huge argument with one of the girls because she thinks I'm trying to be funny and prank them and that she's getting really scared and this is no longer funny. But he keeps telling her, I'm not that kind of person. And she says, well, how do we know that girl wasn't just Tanner in a wig? or if it's really the goat man. How do we know that this is the real Tanner and the goat man didn't just kill Tanner in the woods and then take his gun? So we get into a huge argument about this where me and Tan are like, we could seriously be in danger at the very least with someone sneaking themselves into our trailer without us knowing and then mingling with us. And at worst, something could be as bad as what we think it is in the forest screwing with us. One of the girls is crying saying she wants to go home right now and we're telling her we shouldn't because none of us are walking through the woods in the middle of the night. At this point, the sun is starting to go down and it's getting a little cloudy out. We eat something and turn on the radio for a while, but we can't really get a station or anything decent. So we turn it off about the time that Tan's cousin shows up. 
He was about 19, I think. At this point, the sun was just barely over the horizon, and he has one of those heavy-duty lantern flashlights and another rifle. He walks up to the trailer, and we whisper to Tan if he's sure that's his cousin, and he says yes. The guy looks behind him and all around the camp, and then walks in. He kind of glances at all of us and looks a little confused. He says, where's your other little buddy at? I figured she would meet up at the cabin. Is she a little slow or something? He also asked whether we had been cooking by the cabin because it smelled like blood and hot pans all the way up the trail. We all are like, nope, but we ask him what he's talking about with the girl he saw. He had come down the trail Tan had been using, and he had come up on one of the one of you guys buddies standing in the middle of the trail, looking at him slack-jawed. He had asked her a bunch of questions, but all she did was look at him. Then she smiled at him, and he said that really she just kept walking. She couldn't seem to keep up with him, and kept lagging a little behind him. He said he asked her if she was hurt or something, and if she needed any help, but she continued to stare. Eventually, he had been walking and turned around a bend in the trail, but when he turned around and went back to see if she was okay, the trail was empty. He assumed she had taken some sort of shortcut through the woods to our trailer. We tell him the whole story of what's been going on. I half expected him to say we were full of shit, but he just listened and then sat down on the couches in the living room. Tanner's cousin gets back to the girl. He says when she had kept trying to lag behind him, it was kind of weirding him out. So he tried to keep her in front of him, but no matter how slow he walked, she was always lagging a little behind, and that he smelled this nasty smell, and it got stronger as he got to the camp. Eventually, it got really strong. She had said something really low that he didn't catch, and when he turned around, she had been right the fuck up on him, and then he stepped back from her. It was at this point, he asked if she was okay, and if she wasn't, he could then carry her the rest of the way, and she just kept staring. He said he reached out for her as in to grab her shoulder, but that he must have misjudged the distance because she was off to the side and where he had put his hand, she had like moved while he was looking dead at her. So at this point, we know this shit's real, unless Tan is playing a joke, which we can tell he's not because he's almost pissing his pants like the rest of us. So they load up the rifles, we eat some more, and then we just kind of sit around until 11. To this day, every time I think about this, I really pray to God it's some huge prank that my cousin played on me and really just never re revealed so that I could just shit for the rest of my life. Around 11 o'clock, the stink of copper returns into an actual nasty gross blood-like smell, like cooking blood in singed hair. Tan and his cousins, Reese, get the fuck up, instantly grab their rifles. There's a half knocking, half clawing at the door, and I shit you not, there's a voice, and it sounds like when you see those YouTube cats and dogs whose owners teach them to talk. It says in this halting, weirdly toned voice to let me in, stop fucking playing. It made my nuts creep again against my body and one of the girls started crying and calling on Jesus. It was so obvious that it wasn't a person talking. It didn't have the right cadence and that's some of the shit I never realized until this moment. All people have a certain cadence when they talk, no matter what language. All people have a certain rhythm to their talking. This shit didn't have any type of cadence or rhythm. Like I said, one of those YouTube cats that it sounds like it's talking but it's really not. So I'm in full terror mode. We keep yelling outside who is it stop fucking around man and it just keeps saying, let me in or in for almost 15 minutes. One of the things that was the worst is this is exactly what Tanner said when he tried to get in earlier. So then as quickly as it happened, it was gone and the smell went away with it. And for the next hour or so, you can hear someone basically creeping around in the woods, but really every couple minutes, it'll come back to the door and then say something. Finally, when the smell fades away, it's around two in the morning right now. Reese says, man, fuck this, and opens the door and walks outside with his rifle. He fires a shot in the air and says something to the effect of, in the name of Jesus Christ, go away. He fires two more times and then from the woods right up against the river across from the trailer, it sounded like something slowly gibbering and hooting. Then it starts screaming. It almost sounds like a woman and a cat in a bag screaming together. Like I seriously have never heard anything like this. And you can hear the brush all the way over there start to shake. Reese fires over the tree line and then starts backing into the house. We lock the door and we can hear the shit keening and screaming. Reese says something had come out of the bushes super low to the ground, crawling towards the cabin to which he had shot at it. Pretty much, that was how the rest of the night went. It was literally screaming constantly for the next two hours and we could hear shit moving out in the tree line, but it never came back to the cabin until everyone had finally fallen asleep. Tan had been sitting in a chair watching the door with his rifle and nobody else heard or saw this. And he told me about two days after when the whole thing was over. He said that he'd been nodding off after the screaming and noises 
finally stopped. He had been almost asleep when he saw someone come out of the bathroom and then lay down in the middle of the floor to go to sleep. He just assumed it was one of us and nodded off. Then he said he kind of realized that something was wrong and while pretending to be sleeping, he counted us. There were now nine people in the cabin. He basically didn't want to try to shoot at the thing in the cabin and have it kill us all right then and there or have Reese wake up and start shooting and then we kill ourselves. So he just stayed awake the whole night pretending to be asleep. He said sometimes it would stand up and do this kind of jittery thing or heave like it was laughing, but then it would lay back down. Because of my perspective, nothing happened. We woke up and noticed that Tan was a little jittery and that he was avoiding talking at all to us. But we ate some breakfast, packed up, and started walking to the house. He stayed last in the cabin and said he'd lock up and bring me my uncle's keys. They'd just start walking and also that he'd catch up, but I didn't really want to fucking do this. We got a little bit up the path and when he came running up, basically we just jogged back to his house. His cousin took us home. The worst part was there was a window in the bathroom. Tan had gone back to lock up and looked in there, and we were too stupid to lock a screenless window. The window was fucking up when he went in there. I'm guessing it had been doing this all along, waiting for us to fall asleep and then slip in, getting amongst us. It walked with us all the way back to the house, and then he said it lagged to the back of the group, looked him dead in the eyes before walking into the woods.